what's your favorite video game? Uh, probably Super Mario RPG. No, I don't think I've ever played that. Yeah, it was, uh, for a long time I was, uh, kind of behind the curve, like always playing like the last gen stuff. Like, uh, I remember, uh, buying that when Blockbuster was getting rid of it and I just kind of kept coming back to it and just, uh, yeah, it was just like, uh, wasn't necessarily like, like Mario was okay, I guess, but you know, the game had a good sense of humor and like, like I was, that was kind of like the first RPG I really sunk my teeth into. I, I tend to like, like those a lot now and just music was fun. Just took a lot of, took a lot of good memories of playing that back, back in, uh, what was that? Sixth grade, I think. But yeah, a lot of good times with that one. Did you attend a Gamergate meetup? I did not. You talked about how these people were telling lies about your friends. You made some friends during Gamergate, mm-hmm. then I take it. O- online, yes. I've uh, I was at a con once, and just our schedules didn't line up, so we never got to meet. But we were like in the same building a couple of times. But I haven't haven't met anyone I've that that I've uh, that I met that I've met online through Gamergate in person. Do you have any thoughts on Vivian James or Gamergate related art projects? Always loved that design and really wish that some of those uh some of those uh, video game projects panned out cuz those looked like they would have been a lot of fun to play. Yeah, some of those looked really good. Like the Project Sock Just one looked pretty good. Yeah. And uh if you remember uh Shirtstorm with the guy who uh who landed a probe on a, on a comet and got criticized for the the like the bikini babe shirt he was wearing. Oh yes. Uh, the the woman who de- the one who designed that Ellie Prizman made a like made a, a Vivian James hoodie and I've actually got one of those. I'm 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 pretty happy about that. I don't have to wear it because I want to get stained, but I've got it. Oh, you could have worn it for the interview. I could have. You could have been on camera. <laughs> well, that's not going to yeah. translate to the book, but still. <laughs> we are live on we are live streaming now if you I'm not sure if you're aware. Yeah. I, I think I mentioned something. I of course, yeah, I'm pretty sure I mentioned something. <laughs> yeah, you did. Okay, okay. Otherwise that'd be like a really <laughs> shitty behavior on my part. Alright. Nearing the end here. What was your favorite right. moment during Gamergate? Mm. I'd probably have to say uh, SPJ Airplay. That was, you know, like a lot, of, a lot of stuff. Like just that. That was one of the first big. That was probably the biggest event I was actually, you know, like there and like when it was happening and just like that. I remember the build up, you know, like the like the, the people getting ready to show up, like and just, just I remember being like really excited for seeing seeing that that come in there and then it, that that was that was a that was a big deal. So I was I was pretty excited watch, watching that, and then just the that bomb threat. It's like you've got to be kidding me! I couldn't have, like I wouldn't have been a big enough hack to write that, you know? Yeah, and it's I I'm sure you remember back then, but this was a big deal. Like everybody was talking about this upcoming thing. This was huge, and yeah, I was. Uh, we I seemed like I don't know maybe maybe other people didn't feel this way, but I sort of always knew that there was going to be a bomb threat, a fire alarm, something. I knew someone is going to do something. Yeah. There was anti-Gamergate or trolls or what. Yeah. But it seemed like, I, no, I, there's no way I, they're going to let this happen. Yeah. I was, I was thinking, like, like the thought crossed my mind, like, no, they, they wouldn't. Like, you're kidding. No. But, yeah, and then but, yeah I, I remember... Yeah, just, just yeah, the the excitement, the build up, seeing the the people coming in there, like you know, like uh, yeah, it's like I still remember, uh, remember remember Apollo taking taking the stage. That was that was a cool moment. Glad he's doing well, by the way. He is, he is. I just talked to him yesterday. Yeah, I think or two days ago. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, and I I remember seeing SPJ Airplay, and I I I'm, I'm glad it happened. I thought it was good. Yeah. But it was kind of lackluster. It's like this huge buildup and then nobody in the press even remotely covers it. Like yeah. it doesn't get any coverage at all. Like it got like one article on Polygon and that was it. Yeah. 
and maybe if like a few other like some of the pro gaming pro gamergate websites covered it right yeah they covered gamergate from a more neutral angle but like uh yeah. you didn't see like the new york times or anybody cover it just right did uh was your trust in the media harmed because of gamergate or was it improved or i'd say it was pretty low to begin with honestly but just kind of the kind of like the pettiness was kind of what what surprised me where there was kind of like the, this sort of like uh like with with the gamers are dead and, and a lot of stuff like a lot of behavior that that you know sent from that was there was there was this personal animus towards you know people who would uh who would dare question their ethics that that kind of thing that kind of that, that kind of threw me because I, I you know i kind of thought thought of journalists as more the you know the jaded flat out don't care anymore about you know like just just you know write word, words on a page you know i've seen it all before and then you know find find there's there is a passion but not the way i was expecting if you could like that aspect of describe me if you could have changed one thing about gamergate what would it be <sighs> the name i hate the gate suffix for for you know scandals like watergate was ages ago just, I, I never liked. I think that's probably why I didn't look into it much in the first place. Was, was honestly the name because there's just something about the gate thing that just kind of that just kind of makes me groan a little, right? Like the like the like you know like the art with like the the two G's making a controller and stuff. We're, we're cool all that, but never 100% sold on that name. What would you have personally done different during Game Brigade? Probably gotten involved sooner. I felt like I missed out on a lot of, a lot of the early stuff, like especially like some of the 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 charity drives and stuff. Those those I felt like I missed out on. Like uh, like I did. Uh, like I remember that it actually inspired me to be more charitable in general, just because like some of the people I met through Gamergate just talking about about good cause, like hey, I should donate to that. It kind of felt like oh, like I missed out on on some of the big drives they did early on. Well, that's interesting because I was talking with somebody a couple of days ago. I don't think it was Paulo who said this. It was somebody else I interviewed. But they said that, oh, I think it was Pocket Shop. They said that they wish they spent less time on Gamergate. And you kind of wish you spent more. Yeah. Whereas it was, a, it was a crazy time. It was, you know, maybe not... Like yeah, I probably like got got you know more intense and involved at times, but but I remember having like a lot of fun, meeting a lot of people I enjoyed interacting with, and you know I getting to have spent more time with them before you know they were, well in a lot of cases they were you know kicked off of off various platforms and stuff and all that touch, or you know they just kind of burned out and left. You know getting to, getting to know them, like uh, at their most passionate, I think would have been would have been a lot of fun. It probably would have burned out myself. I don't know, but. Uh, you know, grass is always greener. Yeah, it was it was interesting because a lot of people did get burned out. I mean, like, this thing went on for years, so I get, I get it. Yeah. No, and you can only yeah. maintain that level of fashion for so long. I I'm surprised I did as long as I did. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's and then of course like once once people get burned out, they're like, man, I just wasted like six thousand hours of my life on this stuff like what have i done <laughs> <laughs> right yeah but i mean it was we did a lot of good stuff you know so it was yeah i'm happy with it i mean i you know i wish i did say with the puck shop anybody agreed i said i wish i would have spent more, less time on it too and that's true um i wish i would have i wish i would have interacted with it differently in like a healthier way because mm. i feel like i was trying to do everything I was trying yeah. to, I was involved in, I was, I was like posting on like the, like other, I would, I was literally, I was, I talk about Gamergate anywhere it was talked about pretty much. So I'd go on like yeah. RPG Codex, the face punch forums, <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, I'd go on space battle, like all these MMO champion GameSpot, they all yeah. ran their own like Gamergate communities separate yeah. from like the mainstream forums and stuff. It's like I'd be on like yeah. RPG Codex and talking to those people about Gamergate. I was like, these are the only posts I'm ever making on RPG Codex. 
<laughs> like, you know, it's like, okay, yeah. all right, maybe that's a bit, maybe that's a bit much. Like, it was my life for a, a while there, and I feel like yeah. I, I wish I had a better balance with it, but I don't regret my involvement at all. We, I mean, we, we were yeah. good people. We did a lot of good things. We didn't get everything we wanted. We didn't get a lot of what we yeah. wanted, but we had a positive change on the world. Um, I think that, yeah. I think that the torrential downpour stuff and the, the, the localization of games, I think we probably did have like a real impact there. Yeah. Cause it, if you remember like fire emblem fates and stuff like that was butchered to hell and back. Oh, and Oh yeah. We don't see, I, at least I haven't seen, I don't pay, play a lot of JRPGs, but you know, it doesn't seem like anything on that scale is happening now. Like I'm sure that there's yeah. still stuff that gets censored at localization, but it's not yeah. anywhere on that level. Yeah. Right. So I think that was also like the first time there'd been like a, a real like backlash against that, that kind of thing where, you know, like there's kind of the nostalgia for the old, uh, like Final Fantasy VI or whatever one that was with like the you Spoonie Bar and all that kind of stuff where it kind of came a, came more of a, like, no, we do actually want to have an experience kind of like it was originally intended. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, and then like they, apparently, um, like Ace Combat 3, I think it was, was like one of the most butchered games of all time back in like the no. early 2000s. Or was yeah. It, what year was that? Let's see. Were they, they the North American version of the game? 2000, okay. Well, it was released okay. in Japan in 99, North America and Europe in 2000. But they took yeah. out, they took out like the entire story. And yeah. they took out like half the missions. And uh, it's literally oh, the whole, they took out the whole story. So the yeah. game, the game is literally just like go fly around, blow shit up. Like in Japan, there's a whole story with multiple endings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's like twice as many missions, and like yeah, no, North America didn't get that at all. And that's a scandal, and it should be a scandal. Yeah. Let's say it's ten years from now, and an online movement is looking to Gamergate, Black Lives Matter, and Occupy Wall Street for guidance for their movement. What advice do you have for them? Uh, let's see. I guess, uh, hmm. well, first, don't let it consume your life. Second, know specifically what you're after. Don't plan on it going forever, e even if you're having fun in the moment. You know, try to, try to, you know, like find, you know, like, like-minded people, like, form, like, don't necessarily, like, be in there to fight enemies. Try to make friends. That's going to make things a lot better for the entire experience experience reach out like try to find you know people who will spread your message like work with them when you can and when you can't do what you can to spread it yourself like it's going against the grain is uh it is something most people don't do for a reason so it's it's not not an easy task and you know i don't have a perfect solution but uh you know gamergate was one of the more successful ones i've, I've ever seen and i'm glad i was part of it have you personally learned anything during your years in Gamergate? Or time in Gamergate, I should say. Uh, hmm. I guess a lot a lot of it's more like, you know, about, you know, like the, the personal interactions cuz like I uh like what like definitely like I I'm definitely, you know, like have to you know, actively try to avoid the the whole echo chamber thing because that's definitely something I tend towards. And uh, seeing the value of moving outside that was, like, the time I stepped out of that the most was some of the most fun I've had in my life. So it's uh, something I probably wouldn't have found out otherwise. But you know, like, definitely, like, you know, allowing, like, allowing you know free speech, like, let bad ideas be heard so they can be argued against. Like, like, like even Nazis, like, if no one knows. That is there. How are they know to going to know to argue against it? You know, like have, like have it there to be to be you know like taken down the way it should. You know. Yeah, I agree. Christopher Hitchens' speech on free speech. Have you seen that? Uh, it's been a while. Oh, it's 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 glorious. You know, when you censor somebody, you're not just determining what they can or can't say. You're determining what you can or can't hear. Right. He has like a a much more in depth analysis than just that, but right, right. So you think Gamergate was pretty successful then, huh? Like, 
in like it didn't like revolutionize you know gaming journalism going forward but in the sense that you know like it 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 created such a change that you know like nine years later people are still bringing it up in a way that you know like like occupy wall street was a much more visible movement i'd say because you know there's like much more of a boots on the ground kind of thing but people don't bring it up as much anymore despite you know there being like similar levels of passion you know I, so yeah gamergate there was something special about it. What do you think of this interview project? Uh, it's it, it, interesting. Like, I hope it I hope it goes well. Like, uh, so like uh, trying to correct the, the the narrative that it tried so hard to make sure was was one very very specific thing is a tough task. But someone should definitely try tackling it. And to be clear, I just want to clarify, I actually don't necessarily, my objective, I should say, is not to really change the narrative. Like, I think that would be okay. nice, but yeah. I just yeah. want to give people a chance to to tell their stories and, and on both sides. Right. And just hear them out. That's really what I want. Yeah, there definitely was more nuance than you can just find from a, you know, like a quick internet search, like a lot more. So, yeah, on, on both sides. I'm some people reading this might hold a negative view of Gamergate. Do you have anything you want to say to those people? It's at the end of the day, it was just a bunch of people like very passionate about playing video games who wanted to uh, stop people who were criticizing them from being able to enjoy, enjoy their hobby. Like that's basically, basically people who just wanted to have fun were antagonized and it they were antagonized so hard, people are talking about it almost a decade later. And we did not we did not pick the fight. We did not pick the fight. That's an interesting phrasing. You feel like this was something that happened to us rather than something that we chose. Like, like for example, like the, the whole, you know, worrying about the the whole, like, possible collusion and like did uh like did uh zoe quinn actually you know like earn her earn her awards and her positive press coverage or was that you know something else what was a pretty minor thing because you know like 99 percent of people have never even have never heard of the game but just like the the level of you know like the gamers are dead like moving so quickly like moving on to like you know like uh, mainstream media pre press about you know like about you know like devs being harassed like it moved so quickly and so hard in one direction that the fact that you know like people stood up against it and kept kept standing up kind of made it a much bigger thing than I think anyone was expecting. Is there anything else you want to talk about regarding Gamergate? Hmm. I think that covers pretty much uh, like all all the all the main points I can think of. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for coming on. I know this was uh, I mean, you got a mic just for this, right? <laughs> yep. That's uh, that's, that's totally awesome. totally doing this. Yeah.